Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy, Green Pastures Farm, here uh, first day of February. And that's uh, finally got a day that we melted the snow. We've had snow on for about two weeks, and uh, we got uh, up to 55 degrees today, and boy, did the snow go. So we got remnants of it in here, but you can see where we had our uh, wire up. We actually gave the cows this last little strip. That's already been grazed, the stock pile, but we had that hay unrolled for the weekend. It's Everybody's off, and I'm up here by myself moving them. And uh, we put that out as an insurance. We weren't sure the snow was going to melt off, but it did. And in the morning, we're going to be grazing the winter stockpile again. But you can see the graze line down through there. Folks, this is Kentucky 31. Um, the cattle are doing quite well on it. Um, it's wet out here. You know, we got mud. And some people say, oh, Greg, you don't have mud. Come on down south. Well, you got mud worse than this. I don't want to come down south. <laughs> it's, it's pretty dang muddy up here. You know, we're on top of a hill. And uh, that's water in that footprint. It's not, you know, it's just sitting on top of this hill. The ground is absolutely saturated. There is no other place for the water to go. And we're on a clay base here. Um, clay's pretty good at holding some moisture it's not like sand it doesn't let it all just leave but i don't know where i would be without my beautiful kentucky 31 into fight infected fescue folks this stuff is tough these cows are beating the snot out of this stuff just punching holes you know in the ground here at their feet thank god we have the 900 pound cows or i wouldn't even be able to walk out here just be a well it'd look like a feedlot and just be solid goop going up to my knees the cows are only in here for about 12 hours and they're, they're going to be gone in the morning but people say i don't like fescue well if you'll beat it up a little bit in the winter time with the cow hooves by either putting some hay on it or cranking them down a little bit tighter get just a little bit of pugging action on it all these little footprints there are, are catching water okay think about all these little hoof marks is you know i've got two million little farm ponds out here today it's going to hold water and it's going to grow grass for the spring the other thing we've got we've got just a little bit more seed to soil because of the the slight pugging action you might say the tailoring of the hooves tailoring we're going to have a lot of legume come up in here this hay that run roll is just full of of uh, clovers and lespedeza seed lespedeza is a really good warm season legume Gosh, it's just a beautiful night. You know, we've been having the colder weather and snow, and look at tonight. Oh, it's just wonderful to be a grazer. Wouldn't want any other profession in the world. The cows are on some snow there. Good, clean surface to eat off tonight. In the morning, that'll all be gone, and uh, they'll trample some of that on the ground, feeding the soil microbes and the earthworms. And uh, this is going to be a pretty good experiment for the spring uh let's, you know we'll come back here in may we won't be back on this paddock till may and what it looks like it's going to be something because man we're going to hold some water here i mean my gosh look at all these little look at all those little pug marks with water holding it into the ponds all these little miniature ponds look at that so we beat the ground up a little we got them off of it folks it's not a function of animals People get all freaked out when they kind of see all these. You know, we got almost 300 head there on, I don't know, there's probably an acre and a half right there. But they're only going to be on there tonight, and we're gone. If you leave animals in an area like that for, you know, two or three, four days, that's an issue. You're going to compact the soil. Uh, you're going to drive out the earthworms. There's no oxygen. The soil gets compacted. And uh, you're going to have sheet erosion. And you're going to have sick animals. You just, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. The buffalo, if you look back a thousand years, even 200 years, they didn't stay in one area, they moved. And when it rained, they kept moving. They didn't stay in one area. And that's the secret of us not having to worm our animals. And uh, that's another secret why our animals are clean. I mean, look at those. We're in a mud storm here. I mean, it's muddy out here. Look at this. Look at that. The animal doesn't have any mud on it. I'd say 98% of them don't. 
because they don't have to get mud on them. We don't force them to lay down in mud. We're gone. They're just, we're here and then we're gone. Keep them moving, folks. That's one of the best tools you have in your toolbox. Keep the animals on clean, fresh ground and you won't have issues. You're not going to have any health issues. Animals do better. You do better. The land does better. Your water cycle does better. So microbes do better. Your earthworms feed better. It's just, it's just a beautiful loop. It's just the way things work. But I can't wait till in the morning. <laughs> We got some pretty darn nice stockpile over here. I was looking at it today. We split it in two. Uh, it's called the tin bin paddock. It's got a tin bin in the middle of it. And uh, there's a lot of green in there. I mean, those cows are absolutely going to go, oh my gosh. So we're, we're looking forward to that. But uh, tonight, I don't hear anything bawling. Y'all bawling? Nope. They're all pretty darn happy. Pretty darn happy. That's the way you want your animals. You like for them to be quiet. Folks, when you move your animals into a new paddock and they're bawling and walking around nervously, uh, you got an issue. You check it out. See what's going on. They, they shouldn't be doing that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. I'm going to let the cows enjoy their evening. And I'm enjoying mine. And everyone have a great weekend.